Hey, thanks for being here. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 196 is with Janet Varney and Dante Basco from the podcast Nickelodeon's Avatar, The Last Airbender. Good morning. Hey, doing, well. doing great. How are you? Doing very well. I got I to tell you what, Avatar is that one thing uh, that, that really brought me closer to my grandkids because we could all sit down and talk about every episode. And so now with, with what you guys are doing and stuff like that, I think it's just steps getting closer to my grandchildren even more and more and more. We love to hear that. What is it about this story that really has captured not necessarily just this nation, but around the world? Because I would love to see your numbers and stuff like that with with other countries and stuff like so that because they, too, are tapping into it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's one of the crazy things about the show is just finding out how far a reach it's had and getting a chance to interact with folks from everywhere. Um, we've, you know, I know Dante and I have both been all the way across the world to places like Australia and New Zealand and uh, Japan and England and, you know, across Europe, we get messages from folks. And so finding out that, you know, really great animation not only appeals to people of all ages, but also people from all places has been like one of the biggest gifts of I, I think both of our careers right D no doubt I mean this is really a wonderful project we both me and Jen have been actors for a long time in the, in this in this career and it's it's wonderful when you get to be a part of a story you know it's all about being a part of great stories and this is one of the greatest ones told in the last 20 years or so and to see it uh, just going traveling around the world and having people different languages different cultures that have really been impacted by the show really it always blows me away how far or reach avatar is touched and and what it means to people out there when when we talk about the avatar verse i mean it, i always tell people that you know sure the metaverse is really big right now but we were doing the avatar verse well before this thing ever happened and we were we were putting ourselves inside these storylines and wondering if we too could be just like this or or we would learn from each story do you do that as well where when, when you're going back into look at these old episodes and stuff like that you see wow there's a lot of culture here well yeah i mean that's the, the great thing about the story it's it's uh it's so detailed and it's so there's so much culture in there it feels real that's what the great thing about all these great stories that the the creators mike and brian have created such a uh, just a rich world that it feels real to us and and over the years it has become real in its own way and so uh i just think that's wonderful i mean what 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 nation do you subscribe to what element do you subscribe to well i i, I come from a native american spirituality background so therefore i see a lot of that crossing lines and if you go back and you do the studying of yeah. native american spirituality that and 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 asian spirituality there's a connection there two different parts of the world but there's a yes. connection there Yes, Definitely. absolutely. And I th and Mike and Brian and the and the wonderful minds behind the show uh, have really celebrated that and and you know honored that and uh, and I think that is something that you know Dante told a story recently about uh, talking to somebody at a comic con because he and I both love doing that and that sort of ties into why we wanted to do the podcast where you know a young person came up and said you know young but not that young young mm -hmm. but maybe in their twenties and said you don't understand right Dante like yeah, you yeah. you guys you guys kind of shaped our generation and yep. the values of of the, our generation of people who watched avatar which was just such a you know you get goosebumps yeah because there is such an energy within every character it's not just focused in on one one character at all i mean i mean it, it, there's the community seems to be really big inside the storyline Absolutely. And redemption, yes. right? Which is something we all need to be reminded. Like, it's never too late to be the person you want to be. Yeah. Boy, isn't that the truth? I've talked about that on iHeartRadio enough. Holy cow. It's a, you, know, <laughs> you know, and of course, I always have to bring up Betsy Ross. Come on now. I mean, she didn't stop. She kept pushing. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> to, to have the opportunity to sit down with the actors, because, I mean, I, you know, I mean, sure, everybody can say, well, it's just my job. No, it's not. Not when you have something like it, like with with uh, Avatar and stuff like that. You you know, those words are just they're, they're more than words. They're messages. They're, they're something that that people are going to receive and they're going to build their own paths with yeah it's such a unique experience i think a lot of actors we were so quick to move on to the next gig and that's just how the, the industry is and a lot of us don't get to go back and look back at things that we've done especially important things and so it's a very unique experience to go back and look at this show and really look at it episode by episode and really talk about the themes and talk about what we did and talk about what it's meant today um and it's really special now, 
I, when, I, when I sit down and I talk with musicians, they always tell me a song is never done. And that's why they go in and remix and remaster their music and stuff like that. If you were directors and writers and, and you had the chance to go into the studio, would there be any part of these stories that you would kind of just re- rewrite? Nope. Nope. <laughs> I'm not touching it. I'm not touching anything. <laughs> I think what happens, which is great, is uh, the biggest compliment from fans is when you know when we do a show, which is our show, when it becomes their show, when they look at us and they tell us this is my show, and you go that then we won because now, now this show is is your show. This should, we don't have to you know you guys are remixing it. You guys are it's impacting your lives so much. There's fan fictions being being written about it and conversations and what if what is what if this and what if that and also Mike and Brian get inspired by that and so. I think they're moving forward with the Avatar verse, and and we're gonna be all lucky to see all the new things coming out. Now, when when you guys put the podcast and things like that together, I mean, is it one of the? I think one of the strangest things that I've had to deal with over the past twelve years is that people are still discovering things that you did ten years ago. How do you guys react to that when when you look at the numbers? You're going, really? I did that in two thousand six. <laughs> Time flies by. Yeah. <laughs> it, cer- it certainly does. Yeah, I mean that's that's something that you know we never know what people are going to bring up if we're having conversations about one thing. You know because there's crossover in fandoms and because there are people who are drawn. You know we are drawn to a certain kind of storytelling. If we're very very lucky, we get to be a part of these things. Sometimes people say, "What drew you to Avatar or Korra?" And Dante and I always laugh and say, "Uh, our agents got us auditions." Right. <laughs> like, it's, exactly. not, it's not like someone put a script on our desk and said, sign here, it's yours. Uh, so, I mean, I think that's one of the really fun things about it is, you know, I love standing next to, to Dante uh, at a Comic-Con and seeing somebody waiting in line to meet him. You know, it's like there's like eight Rufios deep down in that line. And uh, and, and they're not just there because they love Hook. They're there because they love his body of work. Uh, but they love those things that you can pull from this fandom and you can pull from that fandom and you find out that some of the lessons and some of the inspiration uh, are coming from the same place. And that, what yeah, I, and we're, what, I'm sorry, we're so lucky. Some we're so lucky sometimes because some of these things that we do become timeless. Yep. You know, and they kind of transcend time in a lot of ways. And it's really kind of it's really cool to be a part of something like that. Well, you guys have got it mastered in the way that you realize that with through social media and through uh, streaming and things like that, that this is a connection to real fans. I mean, when I grew up, we had album covers and inside sleeves with with the podcast and with 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 you bringing out the real story of what's going on. I mean, you talk about a connection. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so different. And, you know, I think neither one of us takes that for granted. And we try to really respect that. You know, when we said we wanted to do the podcast, just as when we go out and do Comic-Cons together, we know that we're, you know, ambassadors of a kind. I think that's even the word that Brian Konetsko used, who is one of the creators of Avatar, that, you know, we always want to honor the work and we would never want to walk out into the world with that show, you know, wearing that show or that show standing next to us, if you will, and not represent it to the best of our ability because we are so proud of it and we would never want to let either side down, either the fandom or the creators. One of the great things about uh, Comic Cons and stuff like that all over the nation, everybody comes dressed up. To me, that is that is the most fascinating, fun thing about going to a Comic Con. But when 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 you do when you're as close to the story as you are, and and a character comes up to you or a, a real live person dressed up, no, but they are that character. Do you feel their own personal energy? It like, wow, I I know why you're dressed up like this. A hundred percent. I mean, like again, it comes back to that the ownership that the fans have yep. of 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 the show of the of, of all the stuff and and it's really personal to them. You know, it's uh, when people dress up as characters, it's they because they have a personal connection to these characters. And then even the cosplay now, it's become a whole new form of art, uh, which is just uh, amazing. Will there be confusion with the Avatar movie coming out in December? Or, I mean, how do you guys stay true to your path and, and kind of get people going in the right direction? Well, I mean, I think we're so focused on kind of where we are in the series and knowing where we're headed because we have so many seasons to get through. And obviously we are absolutely going to make time and space to cover Avatar Studios because we are so excited (laughs) to have new content coming out that um, that, you know, that really keeps us busy. And I think. 
again, because you can go back to this stuff over and over again, um, when we're talking about the animation side, at least, it's just, uh, it is timeless, and uh, and everything kind of flows together. And so we'll be calling back past seasons of the show we're watching now. We'll be foreshadowing. We have something called the foreshadow report on the, uh, on the podcast where, you know, it's almost impossible not to talk about things that are going to happen and right. as much as things that have happened. And so, you know, we, we, it's like we stay in, I mean, it's very much like real life, right? Like we're in the moment that we're in, but we are constantly aware of how the past and even, you know, having the, the ability to see what's coming in the show, how those things all connect together. And, uh, and it's, it's one of the most fun things about it. One of, one of the things when, when you really, I listen to the show what, when I'm driving in the car. So therefore it, it, the conversation is between the two of you and me. And so, and I have that kind of a relationship with you where I'll talk back to you. I mean, and, and, I, and one day, I mean, it's like, I, I would love to see you guys do a live performance in different cities where we can come and see you put this together to see the emotional connection the two of you have. And now you've got to push it through those speakers to us. Yeah, we've, we've done a few live perform, uh, live performances or live podcasts at uh, Comic-Cons around the world, and it is really wonderful. We did one at San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con recently, and we did one at New York Comic-Con, and having great guests along with us. But it's it's so fun to just talk to the to the fans out there and do the Q and A's and get people's uh, ideas and you know their 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 theories on on the show and, and debating <laughs> them because it's all it's all great conversation and and really you know a lot of times you're like huh I didn't I never thought of it that way and that's that's a great part of uh, of our jobs here as podcasters now. That's so funny that you bring up theories because you know that that's like an opinion. You you bring it uh, bring up the avatar in 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 a conversation. And people will give you their own philosophy, and you you know you either have to be a listener or or you 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 just grasp onto their interpretation of what what they received. Absolutely, and it's like Dante was saying. You know, it becomes their show, yeah. and we're able to you know hear that out and again that goes all the way back to the creators of the show too Mike and Brian you know they love seeing fan art and they love hearing theories and they love the fact that you know we were growing something out of a, a thing that belonged to just the people who were making it and and then became everyone's and the the kind of art and and stuff that comes out of the people inspired by these universes I mean I know that was happening when we were kids but it just wasn't so pervasive and it wasn't so available to everyone and now the fact that you know we can go on TikTok and see you know like thousands of people's yeah. interpretations of songs from the show or moments from the show or cosplay from the show like we were talking about it's it's kind of mind blowing and um, it's very humbling you know it, it's almost like what came first the chicken or the egg when it comes to the animation and the storyline we all know that the storyline has to be what comes first but to sit down and have a conversation with the animators they too have got to be visionaries hundred percent. I mean, the, the it's so visually beautiful, and I, I really, you know, as actors, we we do it first. We tell the story just through our our voices, and then to come back and to see the show and to see how we share this story and share these characters and share the performance with all these wonderful animators. Um, it's, it's mind-blowing. Well, even as that actor, I mean, I know what it's like to sit inside a studio and you become that moment. You become that character. It usually takes me about a half an hour, 45 minutes after I leave the studio to become real again. Because as far as I'm concerned, I am. And and, and that's that's what I love about being a voice actor. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm the Fire Lord. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we always joke about that because, you know what? We haven't gotten to Cora yet. We have a little ways to go before we start getting into Cora. So I'm more on the sidelines and, and able to really, really love these moments where I always say, you know, you kind of can't tell sometimes where Zuko ends and Dante begins and vice versa, because he'll be talking about how much he loves the character of Azula. And, you know, I'm hearing him appreciate it as as Dante. But then all of a sudden there's just this kind of anger that creeps in because he still hates Azula because it's I, I love her but I hate her I hate I love her I hate her though <laughs> I, I love that you said sidelines because right away I was taken back to my martial arts and and one of the things that my master always told me was the best student is the one on the sidelines so I'm going to ask nice. you Gianna you, you you said you're on the sidelines what are you learning oh my gosh it is it is such an honor and I do feel like, you know, it's not it just worked out this way, but I feel really lucky to have, you know, I'll be able to have the first three seasons of the podcast be participating primarily as a fan and kind of working at it from that angle. 
Uh, I'm almost nervous to get to Cora because I haven't I had wait. to confront. I know you can't. I haven't had I to can't confront wait. my own participation in quite the same way. And it really is a matter of, you know, oh, it's so fun because I was a fan of the show before I got the role of Cora. And getting, I, I mean, I just, I really feel so selfish sometimes because I'm like, oh, wow, I have really insinuated myself into the original show in such a sneaky way, purely out of being a fan fan and now feel like so much more a part of it because I've, you know, grown relationships with people who worked on the first series that I never got a chance to meet before. And uh, and it's 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 so cool. And I, I really, you know, I want to be here on behalf of all the fans who feel the way I do. You know, I don't want I don't want anybody to be like, oh, she's, you know, she, why does she get to do that? It's like, no, I'm here for, I believe she's me, the I'm avatar people in. because she's the avatar. Don't question But I'm it. also a fan and I'm trying to be present just the way, a, you know, a regular fan is because I am a regular fan. So I always say, you know, I'm here, I'm here geeking out with everybody who else who didn't get to be a part of the first series. I'll tell you one of the things, and when you guys get through all of the episodes, which I know is going to be several years down the chapters but here, here's the thing then then you start all over from episode one i would love to compare the two shows together then find out if you <gasps> feel the same way that you did love the it. first time around love that oh my gosh so yeah. you've just added seven more years on and we're not even talking about the avatar studio stuff we're going to be covering <laughs> i'm in now i know that it's more than a podcast so where can people go to find out more about everything that's going on because i want i want listeners to not just be listeners i want them to realize that they're part of this Sure. Well, I mean, you can listen to the podcast, obviously, on the iHeart app. It's available also anywhere you get podcasts. We're both on social media. We have a lot of interaction with folks uh, there and as well as, you know, again, at those Comic-Cons where we try to get out to as many as we can and hang with folks and do panels and get those live Q&As and, and those one-on-one -on -one interactions. Um, and then, you know, obviously, you know, that's we have people who have watched the show a dozen times yep. and, you know, we'll get to tweets from people or messages on Instagram that are like, well, thanks a lot, guys. I just found out about the, about the podcast, so I'm starting over from episode one of Avatar once again, <laughs> and they're all they're still discovering new stuff. That's what I love about it. That's what I love about it. Please come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for the two of you. Oh, thank you, thank so you my much. friend. Excellent. Be brilliant today, you two. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Era.